Here we're going to take a second look at BioStrings to do a little bit more searching of DNA string set objects using the Bioconductor R package BioStrings. We're going to recap pattern matching in DNA strings and get into sliding window searches to get you uh, a foot in the door on those kinds of operations using Bioconductor. At the end of the last video, we had just covered searching for patterns in DNA strings using the match pattern function. Uh, we're going to extend that idea here um, using sliding window searches in this video. So last time we did something like match pattern, uh, and then you could put in a particular pattern that you're looking for, and the DNA string set object that you want to search and run that. And you can get all the places in the genome where that particular pattern occurs. So seven A's in a row occurs 711 times uh, at all of these positions here. And if we want to make that a little bit uh, more customizable, we can uh, change the pattern. Uh, we can also do things like um, define the number of mismatches. So we could do max mismatch or min mismatch. I'm going to do uh, max mismatch of two out of nine, uh, two out of nine A's. So let's see how we do on that search. Uh, 16,000 matches there because there's quite a lot of runs rich in A's, uh, but with no more than two other nucleotides in between a total of nine positions. So depending on what you're looking for, max pat or match pattern can be a powerful tool for doing that. Let's extend this idea a little bit and uh, look at the sliding window search uh, using the function letter frequency in sliding view. For this one, this one is customizable, uh, but for this example, we're going to look at calculating the frequency of cytosine and guanine in uh, a view of about 100,000 nucleotides. Uh, and uh, we're going to then calculate the difference between C and G. In the last video, we showed that the C and G uh, proportions were about the same across the whole genome. And so what we're looking for here is going to be evidence of guanine depletion. That effect can arise when uh, mutations from G to T occur disproportionately on the single-stranded DNA of the lagging strand during replication. So we're going to try this out. Uh, we're going to search and uh, we're going to look for a view width of, let's try it with 100,000 bases. And the letters we're searching for are G and C. And we're going to return these data as proportions from each set. So as prob equals true. It's going to test uh, 5 or 4.5 million positions all the way up until about 100,000 nucleotides before the end of the uh, genome. Uh, I want to sample this down. Let's see, let's put this into an object. I'm going to call it sliding GC. I want to sample this down so the next couple operations go quicker because there's a lot of redundancy in the way we set this up, but it's fast. So, uh, so let's do sample GC equals sliding GC. Uh, and then we're going to use uh, logical subsetting here, sequence from one to the number of rows of sliding GC. Uh, nope, sorry, one using seek. So one comma in row sliding GC and our by is going to be, let's do, uh, let's do every 10,000 nucleotides. And then uh, comma after the parentheses, so that's the row subsetting. We've got the G and C frequency at uh, whatever 4.6 million divided by 10,000 is, <laughs> uh, 460,000 positions. No, 46,000 positions, whatever it is. Fewer than 4.6 million positions, so we'll call it a win. 
All right. Uh, and let's see. So we need to develop a couple other attributes. It's called a sample GC is as data frame sample GC. Uh, and then we need to know the position. So we're going to make a new column called position. And we're going to set that equal to this. And we're going to calculate the difference between GC. So I'm going to call this diff. Uh, we're gonna, that's going to be the difference between G's and proportion C's. So let's look at that head sample GC. There we go. All right. So uh, you know, across the whole genome, we know the difference between G's and C's is pretty close to zero. Right? In our genome freak object, 25.4% uh, of the genome is cytosine and 25.3637% of the genome is guanine. So they're very, very close. Um, but if we have uh, relatively higher guanine in parts than in uh, other parts, then uh, that might be evidence for this uh, lagging strand synthesis effect. Uh, let's plot this. So ggplot uh, sample GC plus geom path, where our aesthetic is, uh, we're going to need two here, so x and y. x is the position along the genome, and y is uh, the value for the diff. Let's customize this a little bit. Theme, minimal, uh, x lab is going to be the genome position. And Y lab is going to be the probability of G minus the probability of C, the proportion of G minus the proportion of C. Let's plot that and take a look. There we go. That's something. All right. So we've got uh, for the first, uh, let's see, one and a half million nucleotides, there are more G's than C's. So G minus C is positive. After about 1.5 million nucleotides, it switches, and there are more Cs than Gs. So this segment in the middle, from about 1.5 to 3.8 million uh, nucleotides into this sequence, the way the reference is written, is different. Uh, and this might be evidence of that lagging strand effect, taking effect on just half of this genome. So we might search on one end or the other of this to look for the origin and termination uh, sites in E. coli. Uh, e. coli has a nice pattern like this. Not all bacteria do. But again, this is extendable to searching for all different kinds of patterns in your genome. So depending on what you're looking for, there are probably tools in Bioconductor to let you drill right into that. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching once again.